Thank you. Good evening and welcome to the December 16th meeting of the Federal Conservation Commission. At this time, any electronic devices or cell phones, please silence them. We'd greatly appreciate it. Also, if you're here to speak on any of the applications, we encourage you to do so. We just ask that you go to the podium and state your name for the uh, recording secretary. All right, first up, under other business, the West Farmer Library Land Swap. Jen. Yes, Mr. Chairman, uh, Mr. Ahmed can explain what this is about. Thank you, Mr. Good Chairman. You. Nice to see you again. Hours right. <laughs> Away from Monson. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I'm honored to represent the West Falmouth Library, uh, which is a private library that's part of the uh, CLAMS uh, system, and it really serves as the uh, public library in West Falmouth. But it's a private nonprofit. In order to uh, improve the library facilities, the West Falmouth Library is proposing a small addition that would include uh, new handicap access, new stairwells, elevator entrance, uh, bathrooms, and a little bit of more uh, library reading space. Uh, in order to put the addition in the optimal location, close to parking where it can be handicap accessed, um, and taking into account the interests of the historic district in which the library is located, the proposed location of the addition is to the rear of the present library right in this location. Um, and in order to do this, they propose to that the addition would extend slightly into this land, which is owned by the town of Falmouth. Now, ironically, in 1972, the library gave this land to the town of Falmouth, gave the land for, for park purposes. Well, once uh, any land is a parkland or open space, the uh, disposition of it is a very complicated process. It requires a legislature to uh, approve it and the governor to sign it, and it, the whole transaction gets carefully reviewed by um, the um, Energy and Environmental Affairs Office and, and so on. So we've already been to town meeting, Falmouth Town Meeting unanimously approved a, town, a swap of land where the uh, town would convey this 8,500 square foot parcel to the library, and the library would convey this parcel of equal size uh, to the town. And those parcels are shown here and here on this map, and it's all adjacent to the uh, West Falmouth ball field property, uh, more parkland. Um, so the town meeting has approved this. We've been to the historical commission, uh, historic district commission rather, for approval of the design. Um, the selectmen have entered into an agreement to uh, uh, make this transfer uh, subject to compliance with all of the requirements, uh, including uh, the conservation commission uh, vote. Because the state um, disposition policy for parkland requires that the Conservation Commission uh, take a vote. It actually requires a unanimous vote, as so the uh, policy says of the commission. So <laughs> we would need all of you to agree on this, and we hope that you will. That the uh, uh, land being uh, disposed of, the parkland being disposed of, uh, is, and the word in the policy is surplus. Now, I don't know whether any parkland could ever be totally surplus, but that's the term in the statute, and what we've asked you to, um, to vote in the motion that's been prepared, reviewed by town council, who's asked me basically to take care of this aspect of this permitting process, um, is that you find that in the context of the land exchange, and for the purpose of the library expansion, um, this uh, uh, transaction is approved and this land is surplus. That is, it's not necessary in the, because you're receiving a, a parcel of equal size. Um, at town council's request, the uh, Department of Natural Resources and the town engineering department has prepared um, a memo, which you have a copy of, at least we submitted it to you, which really describes the two 8,500 square foot parcels. It describes them uh, pretty similarly, except that this parcel is very steeply sloped, and this parcel is much less so. This parcel is immediately next to the ball field. You can't see this from here. I have a couple more copies of this if you want. Um, and um, this parcel, which uh, 
would have been a buildable lot will never be built upon because this is coming out of it. It will be merged with the, um, with the library property and it really has memorial gardens in it. Maybe I've given you enough information, I hope I have, to get your unanimous um, uh, vote uh, on the motion that I prepared. Um, and uh, if you have questions, of course, I'd be happy to answer them. If you'd like to go, me to go through the entire uh, motion with all its whereases, which tells you a lot of what I've already said, uh, I'd be happy to do that. Jen. Yes, Mr. Chairman, just one clarification, Attorney Ahmed. Um, the conservation, your conservation agent, Mark, prepared the memo with the town engineering department, not the Department of Natural Resources. So we are very familiar with the two parcels. Um, the staff recommends that the commission um, consider this. The understory of the vegetation um, community is all similar on both parcels. So. I think it's a I think it's a deal for the town. Mm -hmm. The library's kind of getting the, the short end. <laughs> <laughs> it's a very steep slope. That in, yeah, yeah, exactly. it's, it's going to be an interesting. Yeah, I'll I'll make a motion to accept staff's recommendation. Second. You have a motion and a second. Any comments or questions from the commission? No, nothing. Anything in the public? Okay, hearing none, call for the vote. Can I ask that the uh, uh, commission be specific because of the language of the disposition policy? Say, well, if you give it to me, I never saw it. I would memo. give it yeah, to you. Yeah. I, I don't think we received it. I mean, individually. You want to give it to me yeah. and I'll read it? <coughs> if you well, would I don't mind. I need to read the, all these where I don't know, but you might, but it's really the. Uh, the fourth provision that's important to have uh, taken that vote. Okay, I move that in the context of the proposed exchange of parcel C for parcel B to allow the expansion of the West Falmouth Library, the Falmouth Conservation Commission declares one, that parcel B is surplus to municipal conservation and open space needs, and two, that it supports the conveyance of parcel B to the West Falmouth. Uh, library Inc. in exchange for library's deed of parcel C to the town of Falmouth for public park purposes. Second. Okay. Quoting second. New reading. All right. So, any other discussion? Jen? No, I just want a copy of that before Attorney Ahmed leaves. Sure. Can we keep that? Uh, Can we keep it? it? Yeah, that's a copy of the correspondence <coughs> that you. I sent to you. Yep. Okay. Perfect. Just pass it down. All right, so I'm going to call for the vote. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Perfect. No? No. Yep. Unanimous, so moved. Thanks very much. It's a big help. Thank you. <coughs> okay, next up is a request uh, the use of Kunamesa property for a wedding ceremony. Jen. Yes, Mr. Chairman, you do have a request. Um, from a Kelly Colbach. Her and her fiance are marrying on July 1st of 2017 in the late afternoon, early evening, and they were hoping to use the Kunameset property, your Kunameset property, for a brief ceremony. And the exact location would be the beach on the north side of the Kunameset pond next to the golf course, which I actually had to find on an aerial today. <laughs> so. so it's part of the Dupee party? I believe so, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, so just she'd so like you. Second. questions? And that's 2017? Two Correct. Years? Wow. 2017? Yes. Oh. Planning ahead. Because you got to get in line early. <laughs> yeah, I never know. That may be even popular. Okay, any comments or questions from the public? Oh, hang on. Sorry, Courtney, I missed you. We, whenever we allow the Boy Scouts to camp out on town land, they, the requirement is they have to clean up after them. So okay, we, we will put that um, So that should be on, on this. Not that they're going to make a mess, but that should Good be a point. standard part of our approval. Good point. Nope, that's fine. All right, you good? All right, I'm going to call for the vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, no. Abstention, Janino, so moved. All right, next up is a um, request for determination of applicability. Anna Marie D'Angelo, near intersection of Beach Street and Bayview Avenue, East Falmouth, Mass., for permission to fill four depressions in the dirt road with 1.5 inch dense grade material. 
Jen. Yes, Mr. Chairman, we're recommending a negative two under the state and the bylaw with the resource area boundaries not confirmed. So moved. Second. second. Okay, so we have a motion and a second. Could that be quick tonight? Who was the motion on that? I did. Courtney, <laughs> and then Betsy, I think, on the second. Okay, comments and questions from the commission. Jen, I just have one question. Sure. Was this the one we looked at? Yes. Okay. Um, so any other questions? Comments, comments or questions from well, the public? Well, that was Beach Street, and I think, yeah, it was Bayview, yeah. yeah. Okay. So, no comments or questions from the public. You will now call for the vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Abstentions unanimous, so moved. Next up is Richard and Brula O'Hare, 190, Edgewater Drive East, East Falmouth, Mass., for permission to pump, fill, and abandon the existing suspools Oh. and install a new Title V sewage disposal system. Jen. Yes, Mr. Chairman. The applicant is requesting a continuance until January 6th. So moved. Second. Second. Okay, so we got Betsy, Courtney, for a continuance to January, what did you say? Sixth. 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 January 6th. All right, comments, questions from the commission? Comments and questions from the public? Hearing none, I'll call for the vote. For the continuance, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Abstention, unanimous, so moved. Next up is Warren and Jesse Broberg, 302 Edgewater Drive, East Falmouth, Mass., for permission to pump, fill, and abandon existing cesspools to install a new Title V sewage disposal system. Jim. Again, Mr. Chairman, we have a request to continue until January 6th. So moved. Second. Comments and questions from the commission. Um, why the contingents, continuances? There are some issues that Mark is working out with the applicant's representative. Okay. okay. Comments, questions from the public? Okay, hearing none, I'll call for the vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Abstention, unanimous, so moved. All right, continued request for determination of applicability. East Marine Corporation, 89 Falmouth Heights Road, Falmouth, Mass., for permission to install a trench drain along the existing foundation, a leaching trench to accept stormwater from the drain and a set of egress stairs. Jen. Yes, Mr. Chairman, we are recommending a negative two under the state and the bylaw with the resource area boundaries not confirmed. So, so move. move. Second. Sounds like Mike, and I'm gonna give um, Maury the second. I have a question. Yes, Betsy. What's this have to do with what we saw last night? This is, this is, has, it's a different thing. It says that along the existing foundation yeah. of the building as not opposed the, to not the, the seawall. Okay. Oh, yes. Okay, so they wrap it all up into the same project. Okay, that's okay. Yeah, it's right there, bulkheads right there. Okay. I don't know why they didn't think wrap it into that project. You would have so to ask the applicant and or their representatives. Quick, huh? Yeah, right. Okay, any other questions or comments from the commission? Get on with the short thing. Hearing none, um, comments, questions from the public? Hearing none, I'll call for the vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Abstention, unanimous, so moved. Seashell Lane Community Association, Lot 0, Davisville Road, Map 40-11-0013-000, East Falmouth, Mass., for permission to remove the existing dock and install a new floating dock system consisting, consisting of aluminum framing, black polyethylene float drums, and composite decking to install an, in, an underground electrical service that runs to the dock Period. 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 It's actually a lot more complicated, yeah, less complicated than it sounds. Um, we're recommending a negative two under the state and the bylaw with the resource area boundaries not confirmed. So move. Second. Courtney. They're going to give us an uh, as built at the end to make sure that it matches the existing. Mm -hmm. So my question is, why does this not level rise to the level of an order? I mean, I normally just, a, I mean, a replacement it, like this would, would I really trigger just, that. 
It's removable. I really don't. If you want to see it under an order, that's no, fine. No, no. Mark I'm, went I'm out there curious. and looked at it. It was curious, and he felt that. Trust me, if Mark felt that this needed to be in order, that's it would exactly. Yes. yes. No. Mark feels then, this is okay so under that's that's so that's what we go for. <laughs> You want to trump Mark, Courtney? That's fine. No, 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 that's fine. No, no, that's good no. enough for me. <laughs> Any other comments or questions from the commission? Comments or questions from the public? Okay, hearing none, I'll call for the vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, no. Abstentions, unanimous, so moved. All right, next up is Robert McCurdy, 115 Mariners Lane, Falmouth, Mass, for permission to remove the existing cesspool and install a new <coughs> Title IV <coughs> sewage disposal system. Jen. Yes, Mr. Chairman, we are recommending a negative two under the state and the bylaw with the resource area boundaries not confirmed. So move. Second. Courtney, Mary, any other comments or questions from the board? Comments or questions from the public? Hearing none, I'll call for the vote. All those in favor say aye. All right. Aye. All those opposed, no. Abstention, unanimous, so move. Next up is Town of Falmouth, Water Quality Management Committee, care of Sia Carplus, Sailfish Drive Road layout between 83 and 106 Sailfish Drive, East Falmouth, Mass, for permission to install four monitoring wells using a geoprobe rig. Jen. Yes, Mr. Chairman, we are recommending a negative two under the byline, negative three under the state with the resource area boundaries not confirmed. So moved. Second. So Courtney and Jamie. <laughs> She's got me wired to an electric stainless. <laughs> I I now I've got Forces ideas. me to make a <laughs> Oh boy, okay. I lost where it was. We, we, have a, we have a motion and we have a second. Um, questions or comments from the commission? Questions or comments from the public? Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Flush out the ground. Flush well, the well, the flush out the ground. Fine. Thomas, questions from the public? Any of We're all good here? Okay. I'm going to call for the vote then. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, no. Abstentions, unanimous, so moved. Um, I'm going to recuse myself from the next three hearings. Okay. So more result for the next three. All right. Philip Fernandez, 4 Burgess Street, West Falmouth, Mass, for permission to install a denitrification tank that connects to the existing Title V sewage disposal system and the associated excavating, grading, and landscaping. Jen. Yes, Mr. Chairman, the staff is recommending a negative two under the state and the bylaw with the resource area boundaries not confirmed. So move. Courtney. Second. Second. Jamie. <laughs> I have one question. Is this part of that program, Sia, that... The, the West Falmouth Harbor Shoreline Septic Remediation Program. Thank you very much. Okay, <laughs> good. Any other comments or questions from the commission? Okay, cool. Comments or questions from the public? All right. Jen, you good? Mm -hmm. All right. Can I hear no... Not that everybody's you can take good. The vote. Let's call for the vote. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed, no. Abstention, mm -hmm. unanimous, so moved. 32 Snug Harbor Road, West Falmouth, Mass. Permission to install a denitrification tank that connects to the existing Title V sewage disposal system and the associated excavating, grading, and landscaping. Jen. Yes, Mr. Chairman, we're recommending a negative two under the bylaw and negative three under the state with the resource area boundaries not confirmed. So move. <laughs> of course. <laughs> Good job. We got Mary in a second. We we're quick enough with the you switch, Jen. Stimulus button. A second. <laughs> <laughs> All right, questions yeah, and comments. We have a motion and a second. Questions or comments from the commission? Same as the previous. Comments, questions from the public. Okay, hearing none, I'll call for the vote. All those in favor say aye. aye. All those opposed, no. Abstentions, unanimous, so moved. Next up is Elizabeth and Robert Hamilton, 81 Old Dock Road, West Falmouth, Mass. For permission to install two septic holding tanks, a leach field, two trees, and the associated excavating, grading, and landscaping. Jen. Yes, Mr. Chairman, we are recommending a negative two under the state and the bylaw with the resource area boundaries not confirmed. So moved. Okay. Courtney and Mike. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, I don't 
particularly think that the, the, the trees are necessary in this case? So yeah, I was going to ask about yeah. that. Uh, uh, do we really? No, we don't. That? Okay. <clears throat> So the motion, we're going to have to change that motion yep, to exclude the, the two trees. Correct. So you want to redo that? Uh, no, that's fine. Well, I, I, yes, the motion is corrected to, to, to not exclude, exclude the, the trees. two trees. Okay. Second. All right, Mike, second. Any other comments or questions from the commission? Mike? Why isn't this a Title V? It is a title, it is title five. five. It's just in the way it was read. <clears throat> okay. Yeah. It's part of the West Hunt program. You know, it, I think what happened was Mike's right. It didn't say the denitrification tank. That's why it was just the way it was written. That's all. That's what you're talking about, Mike. Yeah. The other two speci was were specific about the denitrification tanks. And the connection. Right. So is there a difference? I mean, because this does say two tanks here. That's right. I actually didn't apply for that one. Is from yeah, could you, would you mind? <laughs> Thank I you. would not mind. Thank you. Is it? Sounds like you got that great cold that's going around. I couldn't talk at all yesterday. Um, it's not a D name. This, the pro this is a, a, a tank. Name. I'm Sia Karpolis. I'm the technical coordinator for the Water Quality Management Committee. Thank you. And I'm Corin Cor Peterson with the Buzzards Bay Coalition. We and the town and the coalition have col are collaborating on the West Falmouth Harbor Shoreline Septic Remediation Program. This pro this pro property is in um, the program, and they have an existing system, septic system. And what they're adding is a gray water hold or a black water holding tank, and that's what this system is for. It's to add an additional tank. It has a tank. It's adding an additional tank. So it's a it's a upgrade to a Title V system. It's a currently it's a cesspool. It's an upgrade to a Title V, but they're adding they're doing the Title V oh, upgrade okay. with mm -hmm. an additional tank um, to hold the black water. So they're not installing two tanks. They're installing one additional tank. They're install well. They're well, doing they're the Title V. They're upgrade. installing oh, a Title V right. system. Yeah. So there will right. be a gray water tank and a black water. I, I think that's where the confusion is. Is that what you're thinking, Mike? <clears throat> Has it gone through uh, Board of Health? Board of Health. Yes. I'm happy. <laughs> so are really we? It's really kind of like the what the one the two before. Yes, it we is. Would have said the same thing so as we said verbiage. before. The difference is that the the two before had existing Title V right. systems, and right. they were just He's adding one tank. This is oh, a cesspool right. yeah. that's an upgrade. I got so it. You okay. Tanks. Why we're not connecting here? Which is terrific <laughs> yes. because they're now improving. On the yes. Right. It's yes. a good thing. Yeah, it is. It's, it's a good thing. Very good. I'm all for it. Thank you. All right. We have a motion and a second. Um, any other comments, questions from the commission? Comments, questions from the public? Okay, hearing none, I'll call for the vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, no. Abstention, unanimous, so moved. Lori's back. All right, next up is Stephen Sherman, 28 Nichols Road, Walkway, Mass, for permission to remove and replace the existing wooden, wooden Dock decking in the same footprint and spacing. Jen. Negative two under the state and the bylaw resource area boundary is not confirmed. So moved. Second. Second. Betsy and Maury. Comments. Merry Christmas. Comments and questions from the commission. Comments and questions from the public. Okay, hearing none, I'll call for the vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, no. Abstention, unanimous, so moved. Request for a hearing under a notice of intent. All hearings of the Family Conservation Commission are held simultaneously under the authorities of the Massachusetts Wetland Protection Act and the Family Wetlands Bylaw. Although a single decision of the commission is issued, it represents a separate decision under each authority. And first up, we have Panzance Point Nominee Trust, care of William Marino, trustee, 153 Panzance Point, Panzance Road, Woods Hole, Mass. For permission to relocate and elevate the existing house out of the velocity zone, reconfigure the driveway, hardscape changes, including a patio stairway, install stormwater, drainage improvements, maintain irrigation system, restoration plantings, implementation, 
of an invasive plant species removal, native plantings, land management plan, and the associated clearing, excavating, grading, and landscaping job. Yes, Mr. Chairman, the applicant's representative is requesting a continuance until January 6th. So moved. Second. So we get Maury and Mary. Questions, comments from the commission. Right, I have a question. Yes, Betsy. That's why I'm so cranky. I'm surprised. That's why I'm so yeah, cranky it wasn't, today. It wasn't state. All, of that, and, and, all and, the things I'm trying to get done to get something for Sam for Friday morning, plus Kuna Mesa issues, all the things I'm trying to do when I go out to there and I'm like, at least Holmes and McGrath usually put a sign. I said, is this the right? Maybe this is a cottage connected to 153. I, I called I the engineering firm. I was told their surveyors went back. We're out there last week. They went down to check. They came in, apologized profusely to the board um, and your staff recommended they not attend tonight so that you could just you know, express your displeasure to them personally. <laughs> um, and we gave, uh, you know, we have room on the January 6th. They did apologize. They thought their crew was out there. That's well, all I can say. Since it's the end of the year, you can say that I accept their apology. Okay. But this was a bad day. To I will pass that along. It's a good thing they didn't they show up. I I showed up. That is what I you. recommended. <laughs> that <laughs> day, probably I just, not. 3.30. I just turned around. Okay. And I asked, when are you going to be done? I said, well, no. I, said, so I thought you might be very grumpy towards them, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Did you suggest to them that taking it at 3.30, the day we have the hearing, is a little, it's a little late? Um, they never they, did it. I caught them in well, the act. She, well, that's because <laughs> I had them. already called them, and they usually send their crew out a week in advance. Holmes and McGrath is very good about that, so... Right. You know, it fell through the cracks. Everybody makes a mistake yep. once in a while. Yep. Okay. So right. we made a motion. So we have, somebody make a motion? I'll move. All right, so she Betsy. And I second. And Maury will second. Um, I, somebody already oh. moved. Didn't I make a motion to move? Maury moved it and second. Oh, okay. Thank you. Wow. So we do have a motion to second. I know. <laughs> Any other comments, questions from the commission? Comments, questions from the public? Okay, hearing none, I'll call for the vote. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those aye. opposed, no. Abstention, unanimous, so moved. <clears throat> Next up is Robert Staffier, 54 Scribnocket Drive, East Falmouth, Mass, with permission to remove the existing railroad tie retaining wall and replace in the same location with two vertical retaining walls, fill the up one side of the retaining wall with clean soil to ele two elevation 14 feet and reloam install native plant species on the seaward side of the wall and the associated clearing, excavating, grading, and landscaping. Jen. Yes, Mr. Chairman, I will save any of my comments until Jack's present after Jack's presentation. Good evening, Mr. College Landers. Good evening. Landers College. Landers College. <laughs> I've been called a lot of things. <laughs> Yeah, for the record, my name is Jack Landers Colley. I'm a civil engineer in private practice, and I've been retained by Mr. Staffier and his family to prepare the plans and the application and come before you to explain what we're proposing to do. Um, there's a lot of paperwork there. We can basically divide it up into three groups. Can you just give them the, um, the plan date on... Was there a revision? We, yes, because the staff asked us yeah, to add the, the fill. Why don't we have a revision? The revision is, uh, so there's one minor revision, and it's just that we added a note about the fill. Um, well, what's the date? I just want to make sure they're looking at the right plan, Jack. That's all. Mine says October 3rd. October 3rd? I have October 3rd. Um, for clarity's sake, the plans you have are correct. Oh, okay. What we did is we just added these two notes on here about the amount of fill. Um, to begin with, we did meet with the staff to discuss this project and uh, explain to them 
and what we were doing and um, what they thought we should provide in addition to what we already submitted. Um, basically, what I had to provide was the fill. Yeah. They have other Jack, comments. Jack, you need to talk up, please, a little bit. Sorry, Susan. Okay. Thank you. Uh, that, it doesn't seem to be, but I'm not sure. Well, I think mainly it's for, for the TV. Yeah. yeah. And then you have to project a lot. Whap it on the table. I have to project more. To yes. us. And to then you. Just this isn't working, there. so. No, it goes to the TV. Okay. That's what we're told. Um, the project is, well, let me describe the lot. It's lot 13. There are two plans here. Because of some of the prior applications I've submitted and the comments by the staff or the board members that they wanted to see certain details, my response was, well, it gets the plan too cluttered. So this plan is in existing conditions with no improvements which show the contours, which is one of the things Courtney was very keen about. And this is simply the same lot that's been truncated, the front part, but shows the proposed improvements. That's the only difference. But in order to see the pre and post construction, we decided just to divide them up, put them on one plan. In addition to this plan, you should also have a structural plan for the retaining wall and a landscaping plan prepared by Marcus Landscaping. Those all, all three plans um, are coordinated. Those structural plans relate to the walls we show. The landscaping plan is separate. I do have it posted, but basically everything highlighted in green is those areas that they're proposing to landscape. I think the most important part about this project is to explain the history, because according to your regulations, we have to meet a number of criteria in order to be permitted to do this. The first is this existed prior to 1989. It was built in 1986. The second is they obtained all the permits necessary to build this structure and the appurtenances to it, that is the retaining wall, the walkways, through a series of permits, either with the Building Department or the Conservation Commission. What I can tell you is all those permits have been satisfied. Um, and um, The next are some of the more, uh, I guess, esoteric points about your, your regulations, because there are three regulations in particular that I feel um, we have to emphasize. And the point I'm making is when you look at this plan and in our narrative, we explain there are two banks. Two, the first bank is down by uh, the man-made canal. The second is by virtue of the elevations and the fact that the flood zone intersects this slope and the top of bank by definition then is along here. So we have a bank down here and we have a bank up here. The fact of the matter is it's, it's my opinion that when this house was developed, this, lo uh, this lot was developed, this lot was a lot flatter. They simply built the house, they filled it in, they created a wall. That wall, and there are pictures included in your notice of intent, is literally railroad ties stacked one on the other. I, I don't know who saw the site yeah. who didn't. Mm -hmm. But basically, they've been there about 30 years. This property's changed hand a couple of times. The railroad ties are wearing out. They're breaking down. And the new owner wants to do something. So I met with him probably 15 months ago and for a variety of reasons, they couldn't make up their minds, but they finally did. And the bottom line is this. They would like to take this all out and build basically three walls. The first wall here, which would be about four feet tall. Another wall here, which would be about four feet tall. And then a third over here, which will be about seven feet tall. Jack, excuse me. Could you just hold the mic a little lower and sure. then project a little okay. louder? Yeah. That's okay. Um, Thank you. We're proposing to do that because this slope is about seven feet tall, and we just have to make a vertical, that vertical transition from this lower level to the upper level. We could propose a number of things. It is about a one-to-one, -one, maybe a little steeper than one-to-one -one slope now. So 
in my opinion, unless you did something entirely different, you would have to somehow retrain this slope. What we did is we told our client that whatever you propose, you can't increase the disturbed area in the back, you can't get the wall any closer, and it really has to be on the same footprint in order for me to feel like, first of all, it is allowable by you, and it makes sense. And then there's all those pertinent other issues, which is planting, mitigation planting. They agreed to that. So that is how we came up with this particular design. What it is, if you look at the structural plans, is this, this wall jogs, and it's going to be about seven feet tall. And the client would actually like to fill behind this and um, use this, um, put a crushed stone base down and, well, fill behind it, put a crushed stone base down and try to use this as um, additional backyard area. On this location, they're going to keep the stairs. They're just going to reconfigure it. They're going to put a planting bed in here. And on this side, and again, this presumes this is all removed. They're going to build two walls, and they're going to propose to plant in here. Um, none of the new wall is outside of the existing footprint of the railroad ties. In fact, in this little area, it's further upland. And in this little area, it's being removed. So the actual footprint of the wall is smaller. Um, In order to permit this, um, we also have, in my opinion, have to propose mitigation plan. So there is a landscaping plan. That landscaping plan shows this area to be replanted because this is going to be our construction access. And this entire area, and, it, and you can look at the photographs and the staff uh, and I met about this and talked about it. Right now is what I call Cape Cod Lawn. If you take a look at the photographs, it's, it's grass that's grown by ignoring, I guess is the best way to put it. Um, it has an overstory of oak, I think some pines. We just left it that way, grew in. So what we're proposing That the, and if you overlay this on the other plan, that in the entire area seaward of the retaining wall will be landscaped with the exception of the footpath here. That these cedars on this side will be planted in this area that has to be, the vegetation has to be moved for the construction access. plant species and plants to be planted all along this area as well as in that area that um, is proposed to be built up. We're going to occupy this area, this area, and this entire area here and around the side. So the entire area that is now Cape Cod Lawn is going to be planted with the plants as depicted on this landscape. Um, the construction axis, the staging area is up here. We, I, I met with the contractors on the site. They said that they can gain access here and they can come around. They can remove all of this and basically build this working out backwards and coming out. To re as mitigation of removing this area, we're proposing to plant it and we show those seeds to be planted in that area. There is no increase in the footprint. There's actually a reduction. And um, we do show some of the details up here. Um, we think it's approvable because it is already an existing altered slope, man-made improvements, and all we're doing is substituting one man-made improvement to another, but at the same time enhancing the area by the mitigation planting and the additional reduction of wall, specifically in that area, this area, this area, and this area. Um, I guess you 
have any questions that you have to answer? Thanks, Jack. So, Jack, so does the board understand? It took me a, a little bit to understand. So the wall goes like this. The other, the new wall is going to go like project. this, and then it's going to drop. So, Jack, you're going to extend that top part out what, by like nine feet or something like that, right? Yeah. So one's ten it's scale, loose. right? Yeah, and it's, it's less than that. And there's going to be two tiered. It is. It's a, yeah, it's about eight feet. Yeah. yeah. And you get two tiers, right? On the on the. On this side, there'll be. On this side, Yeah. On that side, there's two tiers. On this side, there's one tier. Jack, I'm sorry. I the the plan you submitted with the calcs, I I left downstairs. What are your cut and fill calcs on that? Um, the so you, fill, This is the part. This part is the heck out of it. Fill. The of fill in the area below the base of light elevation is 20 cubic yards. And the amount of fill above it is 70. 70? 70. So 90 cubic total. Okay. Okay. No? So. Cody. Um, two questions. Who is, maybe it's in here and I missed it. Um, what, who is the manufacturer of the um, wall, modular wall section? That is on this detail. That's the this is the structural detail of the wall. No, no, I looked there. I, I missed it. The, the, I can provide it to the board. It's. I mean, I understand it's construct. It's a, but every there are lots of different modular right. wall manufacturers, which I happen to have learned about. Yeah. Recently. And, yeah, we're working uh, on a project and so, right so, off. so it's, you it's, you know they all have their own system. That's right. I, I realize that. What you have there is probably out of their construction manual, but it would be nice to have the manufacturer identify. Certainly. And the second question I have for you is, you mentioned that you met with a contractor on site. Um, that contractor has already been selected, or is this still open in the bid process? That's up to the owner. And I'm not really sure, to be honest with you. Um, the contractor's invested a lot of his own time in this, so I have to believe they have that relationship. But I can't say with all candor it would, that it's it a done would deal. It would be helpful if, if you could talk to the owner and find out whether it has been identified. Good, particularly as this process goes forward, that the contractor is involved as the steps are planned from start to finish. I realize that doesn't always happen that way, but it oftentimes creates a much smoother process project and one that creates less issues mm -hmm. later on for everyone. So, Courtney, are no you looking for a timeline or something? Or? No, no. I, 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 all I'm asking for is that has the contractor been selected, and if so, who is it? And that, that should be part of, that should be included in there. Courtney, the, so, the wall is a Roman wall. Made this drawing was prepared for the use with the Roman wall trademark retaining wall system as oh, manufactured okay. by Unilock. It's above the. Um, okay, because I looked around, I didn't yeah, see it. Yeah, it's above okay. the title block on the engineering drawing. Okay, cool. Above the title block. Right here. Right here. Right here. Right here. Oh, okay. Sorry. Right. It's okay. It's really small. I found it for yeah. you. Okay. You've answered my question. I have nothing else to say at this point. <laughs> Kristen. I just, um, the trees that are already marked there are going to be staying, or is that, I don't see them on the plan here, so I'm just not sure if there are any changes there. None of these trees are intended to be removed. I think that's your question, right? Right. I just don't see, are you removing any trees from this? I don't see why they have to remove any of these trees to build this project. Okay, so they're all staying the same. Okay, because I didn't see them on the plan. There is shrubbery over here, and there is some shrubbery over here, but I don't think there are any specimen okay. trees. Chris, if you'd like, we can put that all yeah. trees shown on Jack's plan are to remain. Would that make you feel more confident? Yeah, and then that way it'll carry over to this plan. Yes. Since you, I think it's your your concern because the trees aren't shown on right. this plan, mm -hmm. but they are on that plan. So we can make a note that says all trees shown on this plan shall remain. Mm -hmm. Okay. Good. All set, Kristen. Yeah. Glory. 
I thought it was a good plan. I think the environment will be protected more um, because of activities going to be up on the terrace and now down below will all be vegetated to prevent runoff and nutrient loading. So I thought it was a good plan. Mike. Um, I echo um, Maury's sentiment. Uh, and I think it's like created a good use of a block wall. A couple questions on one of the, uh, on your sheets, it indicates that the uh, a global stability analysis was not performed uh, for the wall shown on these plans. That's, that's a little bit like saying um, I checked the front brakes but not the, the rear brakes. Now the question is, is the wall, is the wall going to be okay? I wonder the same thing when I read it. I did not ask the engineers. I wasn't the engineer for that. Well, well, let me um, turn. I can't ask them to find out what that means. Well, I, I know what the words mean. It means you didn't do it. Um, Which note my, is that, Mike? Uh, <laughs> sheet one of two. two. It says minimum factor of safety. And underneath the note. Oh, got it. Says it. Okay. Thank well. you. Sorry about um, that. I did my best to convince myself that it was global stability wasn't really necessary. I but I couldn't I means, couldn't convince myself of that. I don't know if he means an earthquake analysis. No, I, I, I I'm we've not been sure. I can show you a sketch of what a global stability is, but it wasn't checked. Um, if you couple that with note eight and twenty six, I'm not sure where the um, Built the fabric is going. And be quite truthful, I think the wall's going to stay there, but I think it has the potential of deforming. And well, that's not good enough. Yeah, so well, that's, that I was my thought, because I don't want to see any coming back a second time. Yeah, I didn't choose the structural engineer, so what okay. I'll do is I'll bring that back to the owner. We'll turn, we'll have to bring it and if, if if he is happy, if he's convinced that that soil is going to stay there, then you know a letter that says it'll stay there with his stamp on it is fine with me. If he if he can look at a you know based on judgment, or I'm not requiring any more. Well, I did have a conversation with staff that and we point blank um, had to address this issue with the building department. So I went full circle between the design engineer. I spoke with uh, him, the building department, and the only thing I'm convinced about is that he has to assure the building department it's okay. That's the, that's the only thing well, I can assure you. Just, but I just will have a if, if that's fine, just renew, remove his note and saying an analysis was performed, and I'm, I'm thrilled. Yeah, I, mean, I think we need to be convinced also. Well, no, I, I, like I, I'm not going to tell someone how to do the engineer. I'm just saying that there is a piece of engineering that was, I think, required, and it's it's we're being told it wasn't done. So you know, I'm, I'm hearing now, Mike. This is kind of out of the context of this meeting. In only one way, um, it's important to be here and resolve this. But I have a feeling that the owner didn't know the questions to ask that could of be the it. design engineer. And I think, not I think, what I'll do is I'll complete that loop bring that to them, um, even though it's not my my responsibility, I will do that. Okay, at the end point. of the day, I'll, I want them to assure that it's going to stay I, there. Well, That's while he's doing this, can. if I, I really don't understand note 8 and 26. Yeah, I've made a note of that. Yeah, we'll where, where the filter fabric would go being tied to an elevation, it doesn't, it doesn't specify. He does say, the note says contact engineer with a question, so I guess you're, you can follow your own note. <laughs> I'm good. Let's see. I want to start off by saying I think we got a plan from Mike yesterday that was really interesting in terms of doing analysis of the resource areas. It's very complex. 
finished this project, when I went out and I saw it, and I said, this is really a clever solution for a very difficult area, and I think it's going to be much better off. That said, uh, I would like you, before we sign off on this project, I would like you to come back with the answer from this engineer. So yeah, we'll continue we've all the had hearing because probably, I mean, probably all had some experience with building walls of different heights and realizing that no, that's fine. Sometimes they don't always hold. I don't want to hear that. <laughs> <laughs> so. No, so other than that, I'll I mean, I think, it's a, I think it's really neat, and we all know that something can be designed that, mm -hmm. that would work. We oh, just yeah. want to be convinced that it is going to work. Yeah. That's all. Are you, are you in lock this one? Mary. Uh, no questions. Jamie. Wouldn't some form of notation that it would be um, using the, the, the blocks as offered as per the manufacturer's specs suffice? I mean, it that's what the building to, department will do. It has to do with what the, the soils, and he just told us that the soils are probably, were probably, didn't you say that there's probably fill to put in yeah, there I at really that point? I don't know what's there. The bottom line is this. Um, I think, and maybe that's one of the concerns this uh, engineer had. When they take that, that um, facing down and they um, examine the soil back there, maybe it is clean porcelain only as sands and gravels. Maybe it's organic. Um, the withdrawal resistance of the zero membrane is a function of the type of soil in the here. And you can still think of some soils being clay and some being clay versus mm -hmm. a fine grain sand. So if you take those two extremes, the withdrawal resistance for clay is very is a lot stronger than the mm -hmm. sand in some cases. That's getting a little less terrible. Depends if it's if, if the clay shears easily, but that's another story. Okay. Um, Jack, can you use the mic, please? Keep I the guess mic the it. point is. Jack, please, mic. Please, please mic. Oh. The mic. The point is. The point is, we're going to have to look at it. When they take the railroad ties off, they're going to have to take a look at the soil. Okay. Laurie, do you have something Yeah, I just had uh, just a comment. Um, the Unilock, there was one on Bay Road that we permitted, and it actually held back a swimming pool, and the wall was almost 13 feet tall. And what they do is, it's, it's in these specs, and I think what Jamie said is it's per manufacturing specs. It's a, it's a mesh grid and at so many levels. They roll it out. It's pinned. Um, the weight of the soil holds it and all that. So, I mean... I, I still think we should go further with it, but um, they are pretty um, tried and true. This particular company is, like I say, the one on Bay Road has been there for 20 years, and it's holding a pool, in-ground pool, or oh, elevator. Courtney, yeah. If you look on the uh, sheet one of the engineering drawings, there's a typical wall elevation. And it shows that geogrid fabric being laid in three different layers, uh, pretty evenly spaced. And that's that's what that acts, that plus the way the fill is installed in the back of it, plus the drainage below, is in effect the same thing as having dead men in a wall. Um, the other, the, the, and they, if you notice that you've got compacted fill so far back, but then right behind the wall, you've got crushed stone. Uh, I've had a lot of education in this, as you'll see in the <coughs> coming hearing. But this is, and this is according to the manufacturer's specs, and the engineer basically has put his blessing to it. I, I don't want to beat it. We've agreed. The whole issue on what spec and where the grid is, is per the design of the, the wall. What, is, what hasn't been addressed is what the wall sits on. And the issue is the entire wall, not just the wall, but the whole thing can rotate. Mm -hmm. It That's can it. fall back on itself. Yeah. If so this thing was built on glacial till, natural, I'd say, it's a, there's no question. You don't need it. But I'm, I don't know what it's sitting on. So the issue is the So we'll just get stability. the analysis. Yeah, get yeah. the analysis. We'll just get oh, the analysis. Yeah. Not a big deal. Yeah. We agree with you.
Right, there we go. We'll continue and get it for So, um, Jim, what do you have for a date? 27th. 27th, Jack? January 27th, Jack. That's my first one. At the request of the applicant, I will well, continue uh, to see I don't, yeah. Hang on just a second. I, I don't have a problem with that date. I just want to make sure I understand that we're going to address some of the fundamental issues in the design of the wall. That there aren't any other issues that have to be discussed at this moment. And address number That's 8 and 26 of the note. That's what the wall Your planting plan is, yeah. That. Your planting plan is so, fine. Everybody thinks it's a good project. I, we just yeah. need to know yeah, my instinct the stabil is, is stability part. Yeah, it's fine. Well, we'll get it. I'm just going to ask you to call it up with the I am probably being a pain in your stir. No, Mike, you're not. No. Mike, you're not. So January 27th. That's fine. So no, okay. Second. So we have some more. Uh, there's more in the motion. You're on second. Any other comments or questions from the commission? Comments or questions from the public? Okay, here none will call for the vote for the continuance to January 27th. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, no. Abstentions, unanimous, so moved. Thank Merry you, Jack. Merry Christmas, Jack. Jack. Merry Christmas. Okay, next up is Nadar and Shrin Goldstock, 77 Bones Pond Road, East Falmouth, Mass, for permission to remove the existing swimming pool, pool shed, concrete patio, remove lower deck, and to construct a new swimming pool with a brick patio, spa, outdoor kitchen, fireplace, new pool shed, install drywall, utility, construct new lower terrace with terrace wall, remove trees, shrubs, and associated clearing, excavating, grading, and landscaping. Jen. I'll save any of my comments until after my presentation. Good evening, Mike. Good evening, Mr. <coughs> Members of the Commission. My name is Michael Borselli from Falmouth Engineering, and I represent the applicant. I'm joined tonight by Chris Coriucci of Coriucci and Celine, the landscape architects who did the actual pool design and uh, the appurtenances to the, the new pool. This property is located uh, at 77 North Bourne's Pond Road. It is a fully developed residential property. There's an existing conditions plan, sheet one of two, that shows all of the uh, existing developed areas. It shows the wetland resources from the west at Bourne's Pond, going east, including a salt marsh, land subject to tidal action, a bordering vegetated wetland, and a coastal bank. There's also land subject to coastal storm flowage on the property. And in addition to the wetland resources, of course, I show the no disturbance zone A's and the outer buffer zone B's. So there's a lot of color-coded lines on this plan, just like last night. And uh, we did our best to analyze those no disturbance zones and apply them to your rules at FWR 10.18. And FW 10.8 says two basic things that you are very much aware of. If you're redeveloping, you can't go closer to the wetland resources than the current structure is. And if you um, expand in any way on the impervious surfaces on the ground, you are required to do a mitigation uh, to enhance the existing vegetated buffers uh, at a ratio of three to one if you're in the A zone and a ratio of two to one if the work's in a B zone. So we designed the new pool and the surround patio and appurtenances with that in mind. I submitted to you uh, 11 by 17 exhibits that color code and shade and do sort of an analysis of the no disturbance zone A and B areas, both pre and post 
project and I um, calculate that on uh, uh, in AutoCAD and the project uh, in this case results in no increase of impervious surfaces after development as compared to um, existing conditions. There is an existing pool on the property. It's uh, sort of kidney shaped and there's a concrete patio around that pool. There's lawn area surrounding the patio area. Uh, we showed for reference the neighboring property that is also owned by the applicant for reference. The existing pool edge is 16.5 feet from the top of the coastal bank, and the new pool will be 19 feet at the closest point. There's uh, no buffer um, in these areas where I'm describing the distance from the top of the bank to the pool. The bank is um, defined by the slope of the land and, and the flood zone. So we've delineated the coastal bank in accordance with the definitions uh, under the policy. And um, we also show the salt marsh and the bordering vegetated wetland. Uh, I did have a meeting with Jennifer recently, and there are a couple of things. Um, that we talked about that I think need clarification, and I'm happy, uh, you know, that may require a continuance, so I'll just point those out. There's a question as to whether or not I have shown the salt marsh boundary, which is this all, the salt marsh is represented by this olive color and the boundary between it and the BW, which is a green. I show following um, spring tide and then wrapping around I guess Mark went out to the site and he saw a lot of uh, salt marsh vegetation landward of this line. So we're going to look into whether or not this salt marsh line goes up further than here so we can make sure the plan is accurate. I don't think it changes the math, but. No, and I just realized that we did miss that line. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, it still should be correct. Um, my office didn't. There were, when you uh, you usually flag a bordering vegetated wetland, but you don't f flag a salt marsh by vegetation only. You have to look at spring tide because it can vary. The salt marsh vegetation can be above spring tide in some cases. So we're happy to look at the line and change it. Um, I don't. If anything, it moves it more landward, and we're already entirely within the 100 feet of my salt marsh line, so if, if the line moves landward, the A zone would move landward, and there's no other work that would be, you'd be applying that ratio of 3 to 1 to. So, that was probably more long-winded than I needed to be on that, but, <laughs> so we're going to look into that. <clears throat> uh, also, the bordering vegetated wetland was uh, flagged by a firm that I do not typically work with an off cape firm that was uh, retained before our involvement in the project. So I don't have data sheets, but I am going to get them for you. So that's another reason that we, we need to continue. So I've asked, I've reached out to the firm to get the data sheets. I have yet to receive them. Uh, and then one other um, issue, Mark Kaspersik uh, saw uh, erosion in this area of the bank. I didn't see it, honestly. So if you consider the bank system as a whole an eroding coastal bank, since it's also, since there's also a velocity zone on that eroding bank, the A zone goes to 75 feet, 750. So we have to change that to, again, I don't think it affects the math on the impervious calcs, but um, it's something that should be on there. <clears throat> uh, with regard to the uh, general design of the uh, pool system and the tree removal and associated tree mitigation, uh, Chris is here to talk about the details of that. Uh, I also didn't mention that there's a, a proposed uh, change to the house.
house. There's a, a low profile uh, terrace wall. This is actually a walkout. So this terrace wall would be, uh, I think, two feet tall. And it allows you to walk from the lower level up a couple of steps to this uh, landing. And they're proposing to improve the, um, the deck and that uh, walkway adjacent to the house here. I did, I did put in the notice of intent under the proposed project a, a general uh, construction methodology. I can just run through that. Um, first, of course, we'll install a silt fence to delineate the limit of work. There's a silt fence detail on the plant. Uh, the existing pool in the existing pool would be pumped dry into either a, a holding tank on a truck or into a dry well. And that would allow for the existing pool and the concrete patio to be demolished, removed from site, and disposed in an approved landfill. The uh, new pool would require some more excavation because it's in a different place. That excavation would occur. The new pool would be uh, formed and installed and backfilled. There'd be regrading around the pool. Uh, and then the patio and the appurtenances around the pool would be installed. And then finally, those, these deck modifications would occur. And then landscaping to stabilize the disturbed areas. Uh, we, did, we did estimate the volume of uh, fill associated with this. We estimated 140 cubic yards. It would be it would allow for regrading around the sides of the pool so that if you tend to the site, this slope slopes down the way it would effectively just change the pond form on the lawn area. Most, if not all of that fill would be from the excavation for the pool. I think that pretty much covers the proposed work in general, and I'll turn it over to Chris. And then we'll both uh, get the questions. Thanks, Mike. Uh, Mike mentioned uh, yeah, there is some pre removal associated with this project uh, as part of the construction of the pool and the terrace. So there's uh, one tree here, uh, two trees here. The red circles on the left side of the pool are four trees being grown. And we're proposing uh, to be planting five new. Cedars and cereal leaders. Um, as Mike mentioned, uh, there's no mitigation requirement um, based on the uh, net uh, impervious surface uh, for the, with the new plan. We'd like to maintain the existing lawn as uh, it is. We'll be restoring it in areas of the disturbed the limited work lines. Our lights plan does not go to the full extent of that lawn area, so we're really going to try to, you know, uh, not disturb as much area close to uh, the existing uh, coastal bank uh, as far as plan. And everything would be, you know, uh, landward from there. Jen. Um, no, Mr. Chairman. Uh, the only thing, Mike, if you go back out to the site, can you just toss the vegetation line, uh, the existing veg line on the plant? If you go out, back out there, or is it consistent with the limit of work? I want to make sure. I'm not sure what you're saying. You know, the, the existing shrub layer, on, you, you know, you usually have your little squiggly lines that says, yep. just yep. add that. Do I, do, am I missing it? Yeah. Do I see squiggles there? It goes right to the fence. It's by the fence. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, but it's not. But it does have a squiggly line. <laughs> it does. Well, I, I think I use dotted lines in this yeah, case. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine, Mike. If it says a fence line, that's fine. And no, the other issues Mike and I have already addressed, and obviously he needs to get the data sheets, look at the salt marsh line, and... It's not going to change your calcs at all, is it, Mike? 
It shouldn't. No, yeah. but I'll I'll verify that. I did forget yeah. one thing. He's got There is an existing pool shed here. That's being removed. That's being removed. Right. Right. Um, yeah. I also noticed sometimes when you're waiting, you turn, you look at this for days, and then you're sitting here on the last second, and you notice something as you're about to make the presentation. You sure you want to tell us? Yeah, <laughs> because it's a good thing. There's an existing 8 inch, 18 inch pine tree here, and I'm showing a little bit of work on this side of it, which some members, I'm not mentioning names, may be concerned that. <laughs> Since it's on the other side of the room work, that it's free going to the top. So we don't plan on cutting that, so I can adjust the limit of work around that. That would be great. Thanks, Mike. Yeah. And we knew you weren't going to cut it because we were already told that it was going to cut. Yes. But the just, contractor just in the, the field contractor may not know that. that. <laughs> exactly. Jimmy. I'm good. I like it. Mary. Um, there's also. A um, patio being removed, isn't there? I don't, I don't think you. Is it existing? Um, or deck, rather. This right here. Oh, yeah, I didn't point that out. Right. It's um, right here on, as a note, there's a deck to be removed in this little okay. case. And you have, is it, this is a small reduction in coverage, right? Very so small. And that's, that's why it wouldn't affect, I mean, why would it affect anything if you change your lines, if you've got... Yes, it wouldn't affect anything, right? Okay. Um, because all the work that we're proposing... Um, it's less than what's already there. Right. It's less than what's already there. Even if I move the line landward, it'll still be that there's no other areas that we were proposing to do something that would be counted in the new... Right. And relative to what's there now, it's still going to be yes. further away. So. Yes. Um, I don't have any questions. It's a beautiful place and a nice plan. Thank you. Okay, Betsy. It's my only comment. It was, I said, this actually reminds me of Courtney's view. Mm. I, I kind of had that feeling when I was in there. I always say Courtney's house is my favorite house in, in Thalma, Courtney's view. And this was a, this one was right up there. <laughs> it's a good project. You do it Thank you. Mike. I like it. Okay. Mary. And the only thing I just want the applicant to know that you're keeping the lawn, but this is in the not the Falmouth friendly lawn jurisdiction. It's the <laughs> no irrigation, no did you, food, no. Did you talk? I talked no. to the person who was there and she said they don't put any fertilizer. No, I, I'm just yeah. making mm -hmm. a comment that fertilizer so get surprised. That's all. Um, in the narrative, does it need to say trees because it just says one tree is going to be removed? But there's four removed on the plan. Is it, are we going by the plan? That's because um, at the time I wrote the narrative, I didn't realize we were cutting these three trees over here. I thought we were just cutting this one. So I, hadn't, I didn't catch it in the narrative. So. Just send in a revised narrative, yeah. Mike. Okay. Thank you. It's 47 caliper inches being removed. I just have one other question about the mitigation that kind of just the board. If there is, um, uh, it's saying there's a improvement in the current situation, but no mitigation is required. Is that because there's no change in the? There's no mitigation required because there's no change in. The, there's a net reduction or um, a wash in the impervious surface. Um, but your regulations do say that you should offer an improvement, so, you know, I mean. I guess I'm just wondering, if it, it says it represents an improvement. I mean, it looks prettier, but. Um, well, I could speak to that if, if I could, Mr. Oh, Turner. you're saying the narrative represents, I mean, says it represents an If I could, there are improvements in that we're moving back, a, further back from the wetland resources. We're eliminating the pool shed. So all of like, the new improvements are further away and, um, than the current condition. So that's how we're, in our opinion, that's how we're improving. Things. So you're aesthetically yeah. proving it, but I think what Kristen's asking is, no, is there an actual the improvement to the environment other than just moving that back slightly? Are Nothing you other than moving things back yeah. and removing the, and removing the shed. shed. Yeah. shed. Mm. 
Don't say Kristen? Yeah. Uh, Courtney? No questions. Betsy? Um, this is going to be a salt water pool. Hmm? I get what you're saying. A, a salt water pool. I get what you're saying. Hmm? What was that? So, Mike, you're going to be looking for a... Salt filter system. Oh, okay. Pool. Salt filter <coughs> system for the pool. 27th, Mike. So, Is there a as I place? think about this, and it think. seems like everyone's supporting the project, I'm wondering if there's a way you could condition it and we don't have to continue it. That I'm I can, a little... I, that, that salt marsh is just bugging me. And I mean, I, I, mean I want to revise the plan, but I didn't know if it, if it rose to the level of needing a continuance if I work it out with Jen. The salt moss delineation, and then I submit the data sheets. Just the the problem is, Jen, the, the clock is going to start ticking. You're going yeah, on vacation. I can't accept the um, salt mark. The the thing is, is you'd have to accept the salt marsh veg um, line as it's drawn, and I'm just really concerned about that. Unless you made a condition that the salt marsh delineation is subject to further review and shouldn't be relied upon for further. No, because you accept when you accept the notice, you accept the delineation. That's unfortunate. That I had one more thing that might add to his. Maury, go ahead. Um, I totally forgot until you asked about the pool, Betsy, the saltwater pool. Um, I don't see any um, drywall for drawdown on this. Yeah. Okay. I guess I'm asking for a continuation. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> see, the longer you sit and look at that plan after a few days. <laughs> Sorry, Mike. Yeah. I just at the request of the applicant. Um, I make a motion for a continuance to January 27th. Second. Here, Betsy and Mary. Um, any other questions or comments from the commission? Questions okay. or comments from the public? Okay, hearing none, I'll call for the vote then. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, no. Abstentions unanimous, so moved. So we'll see you on the 27th. Okay. Somebody throw Thank me you. a, um, you. a last see me in a minute. Oh, yeah. And is that all right? <laughs> <laughs> that was yeah. No, he's going to be here. He's, he's going to get three Merry Christmas. Christmas. Yes. Oh, yeah. no, we haven't gotten rid of him yet. Do you like this one? This oh, one? Yeah. The 22nd or the 27th? 27th. 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 Thank you. Okay, next up is Patricia Shaughnessy, 214 exactly Edgewater <laughs> Drive East, East Falmouth, Mass. The permission to re renovate the existing house. That includes converting a deck into living space, reconstruction of an existing deck, with new access stairs, reconstruct the existing sunroom, mudroom, and shower, replace timber entry with granite, install drywalls and the associated clearing, excavating, grading, and landscaping. Jen. I'll save any of my comments until after Mr. Borsell's presentation. Oh, yeah, she's welcome back, Mike. <laughs> He didn't have as long to stare at this plan. <laughs> Hopefully this is a little simpler. Again, Mike Waselli for the applicant. This is a property at 214 Edgewater Drive East. That's in a previously fully developed property with a single family dwelling driveways. It has a licensed dock. In fact, there was an order of conditions issued not too long ago, in the last three or four years, by a previous owner who had plans to completely demolish and reconstruct this house. And it was approved, but the project never proceeded. The previous applicant chose to uh, sell the property and move on to a new property. So the new owner, Patricia Shaughnessy, does not want to do that. She wants to do minor renovations to the existing house and basically stay within the same f footprint, just change things slightly. And I'll go through the changes. Um, first of all, there's an existing uh, rent station in this location that they hope to reconstruct but leave in the same place. The only thing they do is put a drywall adjacent to it. There's an existing uh, sunroom, which is uh, it's enclosed, heated space. It's inside the house. Um, but they want to do an interior renovation so that that will be renovated. And uh, they're also going to put new uh, 
Bigfoot sauna tube footings under it to bring it up to code for the footings. So those would be hand dug. In this location, there's an existing deck, and they want to repair the deck, uh, put new decking on it, again, put fo uh, new footings underneath it. It's sort of substandard, but it's, it's, it's adequate, it functions, but they want to improve it. And part of the improvement, there's no stairway off of this deck other than going through the house. They want to put a stairway that leads from this side of the deck down to the driveway edge that exists here. In this location, there's an existing deck. This is a walkout underneath the deck. There's actually garage doors underneath to get to the basement level from the driveway. They want to enclose that, make that uh, interior space so that they can enlarge the rooms in, in the building. So this deck will go away and it will become heated space inside the building. There's a small timbered um, stoop entry here, they want to take that away and put some granite steps in its place. There's a very small side entrance here, st steps that they're going to take away. Mm -hmm. And they're going to add another drywall over here to, co to contain roof runoff from this side of the house. So all of the proposed improvements are within the existing footprint. I did provide the, uh, the worksheet and there's actually, I think it amounts to like two square feet of reduction. And you might ask why or where. It is this tiny little area here where these steps go away. When they are taken away, there'll be a two square foot reduction. So there's no mitigation proposed. Um, on this project. There is an existing buffer to the seawall and the coastal beach beyond. But there's no plans to do any more mitigation planting. I did talk to uh, Jen briefly about this one. I think there was a comment about cutting. Maybe Mark noticed that there had been some pruning of the buffer. I didn't know about it or notice it. And I'm not sure if Jen's listening to what I'm saying. No, I'm listening. <laughs> <laughs> the buffer's been cut within an inch of his life, and you didn't notice it. I didn't, <laughs> honestly. I didn't say you went out there and you did it yourself. Um, your, uh, your client needs to not do that. So... If it was done before or after. I missed how long was your client on the property? I think they've owned it for probably a year. Oh, that was been done within the year. So, yes, your client needs to mm -hmm. stop that activity. Other than that, I don't have any questions, Mr. Chairman. Mike. Um, the day of the wall, I guess, you got that block wall running north south at the east end of the house, right? In the end. You're putting a drywall uh, you know, right up next to the house, Mike. That little wall. Mm -hmm. And you're putting the drywall wall behind it. Is that going to be okay with the, where the water goes and adding load to that block wall? This is on the low side? Yeah, and then the drag wall on the high side. Right. So this is in the lawn below, and it's uh, the soil's. That's, that's fine. It's the, one, so you're the one above that I'm Oh, this one here. I'm yeah. sorry. Yeah, it's far enough away from that. I'm not concerned about You're not concerned? That. I'm not concerned. I'm done. You good? Worry. Um, just one question, Mike. You're going to be putting in uh, Bigfoot underneath the existing deck and out in the water side. Are you going to access along um, over that uh, the septic tank? Yeah. You worried about I am. Well, I mean, line? I'm not worried. They should be. I think, I think what they'll probably use, I think I said hand dog, it's more likely they're going to probably use, like use a, a bobcat with an auger on it. All right. It just, I would just be the steel plate that, because yeah. it's, um, it's an H10, you know that, and That's it's got a pump chamber in it, and it's an expensive redo, so. Right. Um, and, you know, just a precaution, because mm -hmm. you don't want to have to be redoing that. Sure. And um, that was it. Kristen. 
I'm confused about what, uh, when you say, this, this was in the last one too, the impervious service and, per, and the pervious service will not support natural vegetation resulting in no requirement for mitigation. So you're saying that because there's no requirement, is that what you're saying? I'm yeah, I'm sorry for the way that's written. It's, I've been saying it a lot, so I'm used <laughs> to it, but um, all of the impervious surfaces on the ground, meaning decks, structures, pavement, and then uh, pervious surfaces like gravel that won't support natural vegetation, you know, we did an inventory of all of that, and we compared it existing to proposed, and what that says is we're not increasing any, we're not adding or introducing any new surfaces beyond what's there. So it doesn't trigger a requirement for mitigation plantings. There's no increase, so there's no multiplier by three that would be required to uh, plant and enhance the buffer. Thank you. All set, Christy? Courtney. Um, the uh, cutting, does that rise to the level of restoration? I don't believe so. I, my recollection, without looking closely at what was pruned, is this: this is a, a buffer, a, a, a woody buffer, and I, look, I surmise from what I'm hearing that they're probably turning the tops to keep it maintained. They're not. They're not. They didn't clear cut anything, so they they probably got a little um, overzealous. overzealous with pruning the top and. You can probably see it when you when you prune. You see all the all the cuts. So. Yes, and also nature doesn't grow in a straight line right across like that. Would. Well, it doesn't. <laughs> do we do we think that it's appropriate to put a condition into the? Oh yeah, we can do that. That, that talks about not. Yeah, because that was actually a required buffer, I guess, from an old order. So. Yeah. Part for the dog. I yeah, mean, I, yeah. No question. It should be that. Yeah. As a yeah so we will we reiterate it. in our in we our thing that fall into the you know, that buffer needs to be maintained. Routine, and it's we can condition it to that they are constantly reminded on how important it is not to trim that. Yeah, well, we'll make a finding, Courtney, and everything. We'll make a yeah, finding to tie that and special I, condition right and, to and it. it. And if they want to come in and do something about it, they can. Come in and ask for a Vista pruning thing. All right, Quiddy. I'm I'm done. Okay, Betsy. <clears throat> Nothing, thank you. Mary. Really? I have. Um, there's no increase in bedrooms, I assume. I you want to ask for data sheets. I don't have data. No, sheets. I'm not. I don't <laughs> see any BBW. <laughs> there isn't. It's just so much. Yeah. There's no increase in bedrooms, okay. correct. Um, the little staircase to be removed, I don't see a note saying it's supposed to be removed. It, I don't see it indi that indicated on the plan. I, maybe I'm missing it, but. It's probably not. Isn't. The only clue is if you look at these 11 by 17s and you look at the shading, you right. can see it. But yeah. it doesn't know. And it's going, if you think about it, if this is going to be enclosed and the entryway is over here, there's no entryway over here, so we serve a purpose like to keep it there. Circle it. Our is down. Put it over in the bottom. Yeah. Sure. Okay. And um, the mudroom, I don't think you, it's probably not a big deal, but I don't think you mentioned it. And our, it says remove and reconstruct, so. Well, it's actually, it's interior work in here. This is the mudroom that I would remove the walls inside and then just okay. repartition at that entryway. Okay. The outside of the room. That's it. Thank you. Jamie. I'm good. You good? Mike, let me just give us your initials. The file. You can give a new one to Jen, but. What are we talking about? The little walkway? The little stairs. The little yeah. stairs. It accounts for the two square foot reduction. No question. Pervious.
and ask about that beach and it does show up there. Right. I make a motion to close the hearing and take one minute. Second. Second. So we've got Maury and Betsy. Motion and second on the table. Um, any other discussion amongst the board or questions or comments? Hearing none, questions or comments from the public. Hearing none, I'll call for the vote then. Mm -hmm. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed, no. Abstentions, unanimous summary. Thank you. Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. <laughs> I do want to say that I looked for that coal, that chocolate coal candy for Mr. Come. Bird, and I couldn't find it in the store. <laughs> this, is a, this is like the third time you told us that. You didn't bring any coal, you're slacking. I know. Merry, Merry Christmas, Christmas anyway. Merry Christmas. Too good, too warm, too much Mike. global warming. <laughs> okay, next up is water by Estates Neighborhood Associations, care of Peter Hargrave, lot 103, Southview Way, East Farm of Mass, for permission to restore the, the removal of cattails from Flax Pond, conduct annual maintenance for, this, for the association, used beat in the associated excavating, grading, and landscaping. Jen. I will save any of my comments till after Mr. Brackett's presentation. Good evening, Tom. Good evening. Thank you, sir. For the record, uh, Tom Bunker with BSS Design. Uh, we prepared this plan, uh, parcel, a beach parcel uh, for the uh, uh, Water Bay Estates uh, Association. Peter Hargraves is here. Uh, representing the association. Uh, it's on the north shore of Flax Pond, down here, uh, Southview Way. Uh, it's a private association road. Uh, subdivision was put in 1969. Um, and then uh, the subdivision plan was revised in 1884, and the association formed uh, to to maintain the, the roads and the, their uh, common lands, one, one of which is, which is this uh, beach area here. Um, this lot 103A and 103B, and then there's actually a parcel of land through the middle, which was created to allow this creek to uh, flow through it, which was a, at the time it was made, a man-made ditch that joined two bits or there's a pond number 14 like up here <coughs> and the uh, water lower down flax pond and then and out from that. Um, so we have the being uh, considered the uh, river, so there's a 200 foot riverfront area each way, so the entire property is in the riverfront area. Um, there's a bordering wetland, uh, minor strip of water and wetland, and the banks are fairly steep on uh, this side, 50 foot stay zone, uh, includes the whole beach area, uh, and actually one thing that's not located on from the far side, there's a uh, wetland over here, but this land, you know, is some wetland, and then the eight zones in the wetland uh, going, going to the east. Uh, so they've been using it since 1984 in this manner. Um, the, the beach area, I have a, a picture from, uh, well, has, has been there at least since 1975, um, and supposedly put there when, when, when the ditch was dug. Uh, this, the spoils from digging the ditch uh, sort of formed that, that beach area. Uh, every spring, the association does some uh, maintenance, maintenance pruning around it. Put the muck and leaves from the bottom. Maybe add a little sand and break it out, clean it. Another maintenance projects um, there. Uh, this past year, these, this walkway and steps was uh, rebuilt. 
uh, this project, this came to the attention of the town, though there's an area of cattails out in this location, which the uh, some members of the association mistook for uh, Phragmites and got in. Um, many of them were removed. The area is now staked off right here. Uh, so the town the con the conservation said they should file a notice uh, to have some protocol for monitoring this. Uh, it'll start by saying by spring of next year to see if they are regrowing, monitor it. Um, and I think if there is um, not enough regrowth by next year, then at some time there'll be some requirement to actually buy plants and put them in there to, to get a good cattail stand growing again. Um, there is a protocol that uh, uh, Peter has written out as far as taking uh, pictures <coughs> Uh, sticks that are there will remain as sort of a, a reference grid for taking pictures of the area uh, every first of every month and uh, so they'll have a monthly time series over three years to monitor the growth and uh, I'm sure during that time then um, there'll be some review by staff uh, to see if they're you know, to check to see if they're growing well enough and uh, make decisions along the way if any plants should be planted. Um, as part of this, though, they were also requested to put into uh, this notice to get permission for some of their activities and maintenance activities, which, you know, I'd say cutting back some vegetation, basically maintaining this area here, which, you know, include cleaning the sand every spring cleaning uh, muck and leaves out into the water to the depth of about four feet, perhaps uh, fixing up any winter damage here, um, and uh, clipping and just making it uh, safe for this one small area of 40 feet of beachfront um, to safe for the association to use this, uh, this beach area. So, there is no construction being proposed here. There are two main parts of it. One is to monitor the regrowth of the cattails, and the other is to allow continued yearly, mainly in the spring maintenance of this area uh, for their use and enjoyment. So that is what uh, we're proposing. Do you have anything to add to that, Peter? Not at this time. Okay, um, that's what we're proposing. We'll take questions and then we'll <coughs> answer them. Good. Okay. Um, I think the, the, the first part to address the enforcement order um, basically was done as per the presentation and the discussion with the board. So I don't have any issues with that. I have some questions, comments, and concerns with the B maintenance activity. Um, yearly pruning of vegetation to maintain size of association beach. So let's say, um, and you point to all your little vegetation here, so we're not going to cut that back anymore. No. Okay, well then I want um, Tom shots taken across that beach so I know how wide that beach is. Okay? So, because I do not want, you understand what I don't want is that and continued mm -hmm. creep towards the property lines. Yep. Okay, so that's one thing. To add sand to Association Beach for every two to three years is needed. How do I say this? <laughs> yes, your association is using this as a beach, but it is not a natural beach, sir. It was created probably back maybe late 70s, early 80s. It's not a natural beach, there's no natural process. So you keep adding sand to this, and that sand just keeps going into Flax Pond. How much sand do you actually bring in there? Uh, well, I mean, just to correct what you said a moment ago. Sir, could you go to the, you're gonna have to go to the podium, thank you. Okay, Peter Hargraves, uh, Southview Way. 
Um, there's a picture in the information. Yep, in 1975, I saw the picture. In I 1975, saw the and it spoils from preparing the ditch. Now, I Which understand. Which means it's not a natural beach. And it's, and it's not a natural <laughs> river either. But you're burdening us with a $250 premium on the permits because you're calling that a river. And so, you know, at well, some point, sir. I think what we need. I'm like not doing anything. Do one one yes. at a time, please. One at a time. Me? One at a time, please. Thank you. Are you set, Jen? Yeah, I am. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Hargraves. So, you can understand I'm a little upset. We came here in the spirit of collaboration, and I feel like there's some vindictiveness and pettiness in the administration of this. In fact, as long as we're on this track, let me say, on December 9th, which was a week after Tom sent this information to the office, I sent a note to Jennifer and Mark, and it says the following. My understanding is that BSS Design submitted all necessary documents and fees on or before last Thursday, December 3rd. I'll appreciate your review and comment to Tom and to me on any changes you feel are necessary so we can leave the December 16th Conservation Commission meeting with no additional follow-ups. Thank you for your collaboration. So this is unnecessary, but we'll do it. I think in the spirit of collaboration, a week before the meeting and a week after the plans were available, it certainly should have been reasonable to expect at least a phone call uh, to say, well, we'll talk about it at the meeting. I had no response to this. And, but that's just a pattern of interaction on past interactions that I've had throughout this whole uh, thing that we're going through here. So my reaction is based on how we've been treated and some of what I call the pettiness in administration calling so a, a ditch, a river, which increased our fees by $250. And now to say that this blotch of sand, which is clearly visible, in the 1975 photo, before there were any houses in there, is a beach that needs to be kind of uh, left in its natural state. All we're doing is putting in, to answer your question, Jen, about three yards of sand when it gets kind of dirty and degraded from use. But we've, I've lived there for uh, nine years, and we've done it twice in that time period. So two to three years might be a stretch in terms of the high frequency of doing it. It isn't that high a frequency, two to three years. We've done it twice. We put about three yards of sand down. And it's not critical in the administration of the beach, but you know we found that it kind of refreshes the beach. And when, if you know about the particulate behavior, the large particles tend to work their way to the surface. We try to rake it off and keep it nice to walk on, but periodically the surface needs to be refreshed to just make it a pleasant beach. So, um, uh, but this is the first time I'm hearing it, and the reason I'm upset, and I apologize to the board for that, because it has nothing to do with you guys, um, is that I had made an offer to have this discussion and get it out of the way before we got here tonight. So, To address certain things, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Hargraves, even though you um, – I'm not going to go there. Um, we apologize for not reaching out to you before, but my office has been in a bit of transition. Second of all, the fees are not my doing. That is the state. So you need to call them. Okay. So for you to sit and accuse me of being petty, I take great offense with. You have never sought a permit from this board to maintain this beach. I have concerns about the level of pruning that isn't identified on this. I have concerns about the amount of sand. And to tell you the truth, I have great concern with the removal of muck from the bottom of the pond, which provides habitat for the very species that you're concerned about that natural heritage needs to weigh in on. So, you know, I, we have collaborated with you by not, by allowing you to monitor the cattail area and not requiring <coughs> you to replant it correctly. 
<coughs> so, you know, there is a bit of give and take here. Okay? So please, please refrain from calling me petty. That's all, Mr. Chairman. So, so I have two questions, Jennifer. Yes. Natural Heritage, for the record, um, just so you know, we have no control over. So they um, have 30 days to respond. So we put you on within 21 days. They have 30 days to respond. So it's kind of a glitch in the, not a glitch, but it's just a timing issue with the, um, with the um, state agencies. If they don't have, and if they say that it, the project won't result in a take, then the board can decide whether or not you can remove the muck part of it. But that might be something Natural Heritage is a little concerned with just to let you know um, that said you were going to say something, sir, sorry. Just to clarify. Through the chair, sir. Through, through the chair, please, okay? Through the chair. To clarify on that part, we're not actually removing any muck from the bottom except to the extent that the leaves that are washed down the ditch have degraded at that point of the season. It's essentially because conservation or because the Marine and Environmental Services has worked to keep this open, there's more of a flow and leaves are brought down here and deposited. Mm -hmm. Remember that's why originally we occurred we incurred the infraction of removing the cattails, trying to get the flow directed away from the beach. So what happens is that leaves are deposited through here. We're not really raking sand into the water. We've never deposited sand in the water or raked it from the beach into the water. And we haven't really turned over the bottom of the pond. I know there are mussels in there which are an endangered species. Uh, and so, and we don't use anything except a garden rake and a leaf rake to sweep the leaves off to the side so that we expose the clear sand. We don't go beneath the surface of the clear sand, which is under the leaves that have seasonally been swept down by that creek. So that's a clarification. We can put that in there if Thank you don't you. like muck. No, that, well, it just says, it says to include removal of silt and muck from bottom See, out to a depth of four feet. So I'm so just, it's I'm just go, going on what. It's written in there, you know what I mean? It's Does it say in, leaves? Yeah. No, it, it says muck. We, we, we can put in leaves. I think it would be helpful for you and to uh, clarify that. Leaves. Right. Yeah. And Correct. And then the question I have, just to clarify my understanding so I don't carry a burden of negative feelings because of what I think is injustice. Uh, can you tell me then who designated this ditch as a river? It's part of the rivers, the whole system. So, it's a so we looked run. at it. It's you a know. herring run. You know that. They did a study yeah. there this year. Well, and that's one of the most well, protected areas. It's like herring runs, salt marshes. I understand what you're saying. And Chuck Martinson is coming to the conclusion that he wants to prevent the herring from running up this ditch. And, you know, we did a study and there were some herring that were tracked through Flax Pond and up to Kunameset by way of this ditch and Pond 14. But if it designated a river because herring run through it, then I guess it's not a very effective herring run because of this number of fish that showed up in Kunamesa Pond. I think Chuck is struggling with whether to improve it, and I know that there, well, there was $100,000 in the capital budget projected for next fiscal to make improvements here, but that's been cut to 50. And, and so if it isn't improved, it really isn't a herring run. It's just something that's- We're just a, saying as a sir, regulatory, these, these are regulatory definitions. Sir, and you're it was cons dug. Wait a second, Jen. It one was at dug. Time, please. One it at was time. dug. One at a time. But I, continue, Patsy. It. Continue, okay? <laughs> it was it was dug. All the all of the Kuna method is a man modified water system. And and Chuck Martinson as Herring Warden works on you know, changing the levels of different ponds so the water goes one way or the water goes another way in this ditch. 
we're actually in the process of working with Chuck on water management on the whole river. Yeah. But the fact is, right now, as it stands, this is a herring run. Okay. And by state regulation, it's a riverfront area. Well, and so when, yeah, and so I when, have no control over that, so yeah. that answers my question. Yeah. Thank you. But and it may be that it will be taken out of the system, but it hasn't been yet. Well, that'll be something that occurs after the fact with this infraction occurred while it was called a herring run and it's designated a river and it commands the permit fees that we paid. So I, that's the question I was asking. And sir, just to be quite, you know, with all due respect, the association for, you know, basically altering a wetland, $250 in permit fees is really not, you know, people have, you know, occurred a much greater expense repairing damage that they've done to resource areas. So, kind of put it in that context. Okay. Well said. Anything else for me? We'll change we'll that so we're just yeah, leaves. leaves from the right. Water. Just get the Thank market of soap out you, of here. Tom. I'm sorry for snatching. Anyway, Tom, okay. can you do put the. The shots across the thing so we don't have any increased encroachment of the pruning. And so can somebody. Widths, widths labeled? Yeah, that would be yeah. helpful. Just the widths labeled because you just yeah. have a bunch of arrows and I don't know. Right. And then conduct yearly pruning and maintenance around the boat rack and bridge. So that's just that little it's area just, right in there? Just that small area. It's no, nothing to get bigger. Mm, okay, that was it. So some shots across there, some clarification, and I'd send that clarification to Natural Heritage too. Yeah. Just that, Jim? Mm-hmm. Okay, Courtney, any questions? Um, you know, I, I, I've been listening to this exchange, and part of this is an educational function, and sometimes the word river. Um, can be a bit misleading. Um, if you've grown up outside of the Cape, you know, you think of rivers like, big ones like the Charles River, or the Connecticut River, or the Mississippi River, or the Missouri, or the Columbia, okay. and, you, and these are wonderful things, and yet you'll see something labeled the Kunameset River in, in, in Falmouth, and it looks, as you described, as a little ditch. And yet, and yet, these, these, runs are extraordinarily important to, to, to the fish populations and so forth that we're experiencing. So it's, it's, it's easy, I understand your, it's how easy it is for you to, to um, kind of confuse terminology, particularly when your perception of something that is, is not a river as you might conceive of it nevertheless is and it falls under jurisdiction of, of the state um, and for a good reason. I, I think in a situation like this um, it's important for everyone, uh, particularly your group, to have a clear definition of what's, what's appropriate for you guys going forward. Um, and, and that means defining what you can trim back and what you can't. What, what's appropriate for, you know, cleaning up the area around, what's appropriate for freshening up the sand, what's appropriate for any of these things. And, and that's, that's really the purpose of what we're trying to do. In the end, we want to be able to ha have you, when we issue an order of conditions for you, we want to be, want you to be in a comfortable, that you know what is expected. And then it avoids the unpleasantness necessarily, the fees and everything else of you having to come back and revisit us. You know? And I think that's, we're not here to hinder you, we're here to help you define what it is that you can do and what you can't do. So going forward, everything is cool. Kristen. No problem. Lori? I just had two. Um, maybe you can answer this, Tom. I know this was Mr. Batello. This property belongs to the Batellos. Mm -hmm. Is it 
both lots, lot 103B and Please. 103? Or are these one, are they separate lots, They're, same ownership? I don't know. The ownership is a little confusing as far as I can tell. They're both basically owned by the Patello family as okay. trustees. Okay. Only because I see activity on lot 103B. Yeah. Um, which is the boat rack and clearing. And I just want to make sure that, you know, the Batellos, if they own that yeah. property and they're aware that that's on their property. It was to get into you know, a little bit of the title. It, it, you know, we sort of check the original subdivision in '69 was sort of checkerboarded. Yes. You know, and yes. then it was redivided, so there actually are probably some title lines passing through this these two lots. But it's both owned by either Patello or the trust. Oh, Patello. Okay. And through you uh, to Jen, um, Mr. Patello. Is okay with whatever. Gary the, was here at the original hearing. I know he was at the original hearing, but now we're making conditions on his property, so I just want to make sure. Well, that's because usually we have some we kind of letter that says from that Mr. Batello, so it I mean, probably did, I didn't did see he, it. In did they submit us a, a letter last time? No. No, he was just I know here. Gary he was here. I don't think he spoke. No. No, he didn't. No. And I just want to make sure when we condition something on somebody's property that they're aware that if we say you can do this or that. That they're okay with it. So I just want to, I think we should get some kind of. You want, want to contact Mr. Vitella? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we just need that. And, uh, I, I could make a comment for your information. You can do what you need to do. Um, this is common property for the neighborhood that George uh, and Sons developed as the water by estates. And he, he lives in the neighborhood now. Yeah, yeah, no. um, but he's in the process of turning the common properties over. To the neighborhood association, they're still titled to him. He pays the taxes. Gary is fully in the vote. Was aware of this meeting tonight. Is fine with the way that we're doing this. He's seen all of this information that you're looking at tonight. Right. I think now, that we just need a letter. No, I'm asking you. We need a letter in the file. We just official. need a letter of of acknowledgement. Yeah. Right, and then I question well, yeah. to you uh, again, Mr. Hasgrove. Um, you said you bring roughly like three yards of sand. How do you do that each year? How do we bring it? We don't bring sand down each year. We've brought it down twice in the okay. last nine years. Okay. And uh, it's a small dump truck, and we kind of dump it over the hill and use wheelbarrows. Okay, and then you wheel it down and through. And we wheel it. We don't dump it in the street. We no. dump it over the hill. But, and, but to that point, and in the spirit of making sure that we finally resolve this, I heard some concerns about the sand, but in all the guidance that was provided, uh, uh, I didn't hear any direction on what was written. We, we made some changes to describing keeping the bottom clear, raking leaves. I, we didn't make any changes to the sand, and if that's an issue, we're, we're, working, we're working on, on, working on, on it now. We're working on it. Um, because usually whenever sand is put on, you know, beaches or whatever, if this is a beach, um, then we usually, and Tom knows, it's usually compatible sands if this is what's there. Um, and I think once National Heritage weighs in, it might not happen. So um, that's, that's usually an important piece for us. They're sort of the higher God um, over us, so we just wait for them to give their blessing and um, so I know it's going to get continued because we can't do anything without that document anyway. Um, but those are my two questions. I think that the uh, grain size and all those particulars, particulates are le less of an issue here than on a, on a coastal beach. Right. Only because, you know. I don't think um, natural heritage is going to weigh on, on, the, on, the, on <coughs> adding sand. sand. They are going to weigh in And on, on the digging out digging out oh. in the in the water. Okay. All right, thank you. Mike. Um, on that same topic, assuming that it, it can move forward, um, is something like a yard of sand a year, so you get three yards every three yards, or two yards, or what do you need? Just so we're all on the same page. Well, it seems like it's just 
every few, every four years or some three or four years. Out in the sand? Yeah, how much? How much? How much? Three yards. You have to go three yards. Yeah, you have to go up there so people can. Every, every three or four years. Oh. Yeah, as I say, my only experience goes back to 2007. So that would be eight years, not nine years. I think I said nine years. And we've put two loads of sand, a dump truck full, not a 10-wheeler or anything. Uh, it wasn't much sand. It was a pile of sand. I'm sorry. You know, I'm not a contractor. I'm not good at ex estimating. It wasn't, it was enough to cover the whole beach. I did a calculation. It was enough to cover the whole beach by an inch or so or something like that. Just a coating, coating to make a nicer surface. Yeah, no, I'm, no, the I'm moving. I, I'm, I, I want everybody to yeah. at least understand what we're, we're agreeing yeah. to, even if it doesn't happen. That's, that's the only requirement. And if we agree on a yard uh, a year, or if somebody wants to do some calculations, be sure they're happy with that, then we, we can say that's, that's the number that we're well, it sounds like it probably would not be every year anyway. No, but I'm saying, you know, uh, sand to be applied as needed over not to exceed three years at the, uh, at the average of the odd or whatever you, right. your applicant thinks is, is appropriate so that we understand what we're doing. I mean, I'm, I'm, I understand the need. It looks like a, it's just the same goes. And this, I think the idea of some, some bounds along the edge of that of what you're calling a beach, so that everybody knows that's what it is, it benefits everybody. I, I, mm -hmm. I don't think it's a, a hardship. I think it's a, a, a yeah. smart thing. <clears throat> that, that's all we're, we're, we're looking for. And I'm, you know, I'm, and it, God's higher than us may, <laughs> may have another view, but that's okay. All, all we're doing is here. That's what we I guess can we're just struggling with how to define how much, how much sand to mm -hmm. put on. And if it's three yards, Every three or four years. Three odds every three years. Something like that. All right. That, that's uh, we, that's we'll a figure. It doesn't going. necessarily mean it has to be done. Right. They may no, be giving you the option to do it. The yeah. option, to, that's yes, exactly right. And, and being the level of spreading it, I don't think anybody wants to put on more than they have to. No. <laughs> doing it all by hand. But I, I do like that thing about the bounds yeah. along the beach, yes. just so but you don't that, have that added it. encroachment and everything else. Okay. I really didn't think that was... Yeah. Hang on, Courtney. I'm gonna, I got, yeah, just real quick. I got one question for for Maury. The dump trucks that you operate, mm -hmm. what? Are, how many yards are in those? They actually they go. They say they're three to four yard, but they you always go by tonnage. Um, so it's usually you can hold three ton in it, three to four of sand. So that would be about right. Yeah, yeah that would be about probably. right. Yeah, a one ton dump truck is a three to four yard truck. You've you got to go back to the podium, sir. So maybe I got the units wrong. Maybe it, it would three tons make sense for a well, dump truck? Well, I mean, it's, it's how they call a dump truck, yeah. but it usually... And how many long. yards would that be? Nine, then? No. No. Three. Well, three. No. Three. Three to four. This, three this to four. Oh, a yard is a ton? dump truck. Yeah. It, well, yeah. it's, it's not... It all depends on what it is. I mean, a, a yard of popcorn We're just trying to get a visual, a you know what I mean? Yeah. So that, you know... I, so it, I think it was three tons, and yeah. a yard yeah. equals yeah. a ton yeah. is yeah. about yeah. what Lawrence yeah. said. So. so it's close. Courtney, mm -hmm. so my question really comes down to determining this. Dimensions of the beach that we're talking about, you're putting it, is it 10 by 20? Is it? You already did that. That's what I need to yeah. know. Can you give a square footage how of much, the beach? How much area uh, is the, the beach? The bottom of the steps down to the water, it's about 75 feet. No, no, that's the dimension. That's where the sand, 75 feet you're going to put sand on? They put it on that whole stretch of, of white there. Tom, can you the just get the square the footage so we don't have another No, I mean, I want, I want to understand it. where we are. We're hearing three yards, and I'm also hearing covering the area to, re quote, refreshing it up one inch deep. So if I, if, if I do some quick math and it's 10 by 30, that's 300 square feet, and you start multiplying that out. You're not asking for the inch everywhere. 
at an yeah, inch yeah, everywhere. So, so that's what I need to understand. Right? Courtney, they're asking Maybe. for one cubic yard per year on the average. Let's move on. We can discuss no, this. No, no, I understand. But I, I think we have to be clear so that so somewhere along the line we permit three yards and it turns into nine. Because somewhere along the line, that's all I'm asking. Now, I don't know how difficult that is. I just need the dimension of the area you're going to put the sand on. But there would be a cap. In other words, it would be three, year, three yards calculation. every three years, and that would be it. That's all you could put down. So ten I guess feet, it ten feet there by you 30 go. by you know, one you go, inch. You go to a that's hollow area, that's, that's where you go. That's how you figure okay. I'm going to move on. We've got, we got more questions here. We have another news. What I would like to know, and Peter, I'd like you to answer this question, since you've been there for eight years. No, we're going to get the square footage. It's okay. Um, some of the sand obviously oozes into the pond a little bit, right? I'm not saying that that's going to be a deal breaker for me, but when you, you swim in this pond, right? You swim off this beach? I do. And your toes go into sand? They, they do. And then how far out do they go into muck? Um, well, there's quite a bit of sand out in a pond. We don't put it there, but I suppose with some of the 100-year rains that we have, that some of it might get washed in. It's not, you know, we don't monitor it, but if you rake the leaves back, there's sand out to walking into the depth that we're proposing, four feet. And, but I don't know what was there in 1975, just as this beach was there in 1975, and what has leaked over the few truckloads over the last 30 years that have been brought in there. Because this business of replenishing sand was not really that commonly practiced. As the comment was, nobody likes to do it. Nobody likes to haul sand in wheelbarrows and spread it on the beach. And we always have an argument about, well, we really don't need more sand, do we? And some of the people who like to sit on the beach say that the sand is grubby, it has rocks in it, and, and so there it goes. But there is sand in the water, but we don't put sand in the water. And I don't know how much was there. I was illuminated by Tom's turning up that photo, which he said is available on the town uh, website, that shows this blotch of sand in 1975. So, and I don't know how much was in the water at that time. They have to understand, I mean, the natural substrate of this whole area is sand. And <laughs> well, I'm not... the beach is not sandy only because the leaves might accumulate on top of that sand. What did you say? Not all of Bottoms of ponds are sandy. Right, and then leaves and accumulate then leaves and then yeah. make it mucky. Yeah. So I don't know if, you know, I mean, when he says there's sand there, obviously there's sand under the and, bottom of okay, the my entire other, pond. My other question is what's the source of the sand? Is it just upland sand? I mean, presumably around here is upland sand. You mean when they buy sand yeah. to, to get it? I don't know, probably Patello brings some or something. I, I don't know. I promise not to mention that. Oh, very okay. close to the truth. <laughs> then I don't know who brings the sand. Well, presumably it's upland sand. It's, it would be upland sand. Uh, Being put on It would be an sand. upland sand source, yes. From, from any sand supplier. Here. Okay, those are my questions. Here. I'm going to pass. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Jamie. I have nothing okay. to add. All right. So it sounds like we're going to be continuing here. So, Tom, you need natural heritage's letter, and you need to give me shots across there and maybe put some, and um, if the association doesn't think this is too much to ask, I, you know, Mr. Hargraves, I do think it's probably in the best interest, as Mike said, to maybe put some bounds along the edge of your roof so you know where that is, and so on a yearly basis, you know, if vegetation grows over that, you can cut that and not... Um, you know, violate any of the board's orders. I think it might be, and stakes are fine as long as we have a shot on a plan with them. I'm not asking you to install concrete bounds, but stakes are fine. Um, and then how much, and I really don't have a discussion about sand again, how much the, uh, how much cubic yardage is? Does that sound like everything you guys discussed? In a letter from? The oh, in a letter from Mr. the Vitalos. Um, letting the board know that they are okay with the application. So as a point of clarification then, 
I don't really like wooden stakes. They're not that durable, and they're easily Okay, durable. well then, I was so trying to make it easy for you. something that's visible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why, don't you, Absolutely. why don't you think about it and then when Tom comes yeah, come back, come back Tom can, you can tell us what it's going to be. I'm really open to anything, so I just want shots across that plan, Tom. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, because honestly, if you look at your little plan from 75, it doesn't look like it's all that, that much different, so I'm um, not too concerned, but it just going forward, it would be good. Yeah. Okay. Is an email from Gary on top of the note that I sent? No, email from Gary's fine. An email's fine? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, just have Gary send me an email and that'll be fine. Okay, so 27th? Date. Yeah, I think it's the 27th. Yeah, I think it's the 27th. And we should be able to wrap this up fairly quickly then. At the request of the applicant, this is being continued to January 27th. Second. So Maury and Betsy. Maureen the most and Betsy the second. Any other questions or comments from the commission? Comments or questions from the public? Good. Good. All set? I think I said not as much as I ought to say. Tonight. Okay, hearing none. All those in, I'm going to call for the vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those aye. opposed, no. Abstentions, unanimous, so moved. Merry Thanks, Christmas, huh? gentlemen. So can I have my plan back? Yes. Okay. All right. Next up is continued request for Merry a hearing Christmas. under a notice of intent. Merry Christmas. Uh, Joanne Koenig, 145 Walker Street, Falmouth, Mass. With permission to comply with an enforcement order to restore native trees, shrub, vegetation, cleared without a permit to remove a split rail fence and evasive vegetation and the associated clearing, excavating, grading, and landscaping. Marie, how are I you? I can think of a ton of reasons why we should be happy the night's almost over. <laughs> <laughs> I'm happy that the night's almost over. <laughs> how was your trip? It was yeah. Good. There was a lot of sitting in one day for me. Yes. Are you going to talk about sand? No, no, we're not no talking sand. about sand. I'm no sand, sand but I just flew from New Orleans, and I probably should have brought a cocktail for everybody. <laughs> would have been nice. No. Okay, so um, I worked very closely with Mark Casper on this project uh, back in 2003. Yeah. There was a little bit of pruning and tree cutting that was done without a permit. Just, just a little bit. <laughs> just a tip. And there wasn't any happy ground that the homeowner or Mark could reach to resolve the enforcement order. And actually nobody wanted to be involved and then he called and asked me and we managed to get a compromise together and the property has been sold on Monday. We were supposed to have the hearing last week for this, but as you know, the hearing got um, canceled. So. We are requesting permission from the board to revegetate the area where the cutting and pruning of trees and brush was done without a permit. And I have submitted to you a planting plan and a project overview. And I went out and very zealously staked the area. I hope you all had a chance to see it. Um, that shows where we will be planting the native shrubs. And we're going to put in eight tupelo trees. We're going to take out, there's a dilapidated chain link, no, it's a split rail fence that's just rotted and falling over. We're going to take that out, and there's some porcelain berry vine and bittersweet and honeysuckle growing on it, and plant 340 native shrubs and eight trees. And we're excited to do this in the spring. Do you have any questions? Yes, Mr. Chairman, Maria has been working closely with Mark and the property owner to get this issue resolved, and it's a good plan. Um, it, you know, will will add um, quite a bit of wildlife habitat to the lot, and, it's, and it addresses the um, the enforcement issues out there. Okay, let's start with Jamie. Yeah, I don't have anything yet. I don't have any questions. That's I don't either. Mike. Okay. Um, there's a tree 
in the center line of the area that's not shown. I'm not sure, I'm not a tree kind of person, but it's in the middle of the lawn, and it's not shown. Um, there was not even a, an engineer that wanted to be involved with this project. <laughs> well, but um, Warwick and Associates, Barbara was kind enough to pull together some things for us, and the guys went out and they updated the site survey, and all I have is, you know, Okay, we'll, what, we'll, we'll, we'll keep going. Well, um, but if, as you can see, if you, did you go out and look at? I did. Okay, so I'm planting around that tree, but it's 340 native shrubs, and then also eight tupelo trees. Um, I guess my point is, it's it's, it's not shown. I, I don't, you know, I did. I'm, I'm, there was a tree in the middle of the field, that, and it's just not shown. So uh, there's a stone walk that extends down. Mm -hmm. is, is that intention to, to keep that? That will be kept, but it's going to be lost within all the plants. It's pre-existing. It's been there for many years. I, I, and I'll leave it to somebody's judgment as to whether you want to plan showing that walk so you know it's there, so you're not accused of putting in walks in the future. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, you may want to update your plan, Teresa, and sketch that in. You got you. You got um, a I, tree. I don't see a. Uh, I don't see a Hurry benchmark up. on the plan. Do you? Jen, I know I, I gave you the updated plan. Is it possible that they don't Which have one? that? What's it dated? Eleven thirteen. Yeah, yeah, 11, 13. 11 13 and I don't see a benchmark. Okay. Um, um, there are zones shown, blood zones. I think they are. There's lines that aren't labeled. What are they? Yeah. Okay. So again, this was what was given to me by um, yeah. <laughs> Barbara and said go with it. Jen said it's fine. All right. Here so, we go. Um, so. Uh, we can label and give you an updated plan. That's not a problem. I can draw the tree in. I can draw the. Okay, the and I'm not I'm zones. not the tree person, but one of your tupelos is seems to be planted beneath an existing tree. Is that is it going to be? Is it going to grow? Is it? Um, when I staked, I looked up and there was plenty of room for okay. the canopy. When to I go. when I looked up at the stake, I didn't. And that was actually Mark's placement. That's where he wanted. Then all the Mark said, <laughs> so, oh, "I'm happy." Okay. I said, "Okay, Mark." I'm, I'm done. Okay. I'm done. Which is zone A and zone B? Oh, all right. Um, and I know we were supposed to see this last week, and I wasn't going to be here last week, but that means it actually had more time to have a stake out on the road because I have to tell you, I live in West Falmouth, and I don't go to West Falmouth that much. I really don't. And I went down Walker Street, and it took me a little while to find that house. But I did find it, so I'm happy now but I wasn't happy then. Um, so for now on, Marie, if you're going to have a project, just put a square sign, right spray-painted orange, address for Concom. You got it. Pink, pink, we'll pink. We like pink, we like orange, pink. Do you like lime green. green. Pink. Yes. <laughs> yes. I just want to be a little different. Yes. More, um, um, may I just make a comment? It's not just, it's not, it's bad enough we don't have a, something saying, hey, here we are, this is yeah. where we want you to go. But most of these houses don't have numbers. No. Yeah. Oh, well, what do they I, expect I, if there's a fire? I can't help if the Walker Street houses are not numbered, Betsy. <laughs> no, no but, I thought it's all over town. Yes. If so on, uh, the, okay, I'll on public that. TV, please, everybody, put a number on your house. I it's, promise it's, you, I will make I, I, a I sign. I will put glitter say, on it. That is a big issue <laughs> in this town. It's a big issue. It from a mile away. You know, you see, you see yep. a number on a, on a stone by the driveway, yeah. or you see a number on a post that's... Yeah, or in the birdhouse, or anyway. All right. So that common. said, okay. We got, yeah. That's not we, conservation. Yeah. So no, it isn't. But we're we're slowly getting no getting them to put the sign up on the yeah. street for us. I'll be so happy okay. to make you a beautiful sign. Okay. Um, with Mike, we do need that oak tree because I believe okay. it is an oak. Okay. Um, the other question I did have, um, there were no side lot line stakes and I'm and I kind of shot down that rotted fence and I want to make sure I would like to I know you said Mark placed those three tupolas yep 
I would like to see them further away from the property line because the one is literally on the property line if you shoot down with your eye. Okay. And it should be moved out because we know airspace, if the neighbors want to limit up, they will, and then the integrity of that tree will be gone. And I really didn't like the placement of that, and I'm sorry, Mark, underneath the elm tree. Um, okay. I, I think they should be pulled out more, but those I, are my only two questions. I totally agree. Okay. I had a discussion with him. I don't want to be mad. Mark, to get mad at me. But anyway. <laughs> you won't get mad at you. Okay, that was all. Thank you. Okay, Kristen. No problem. Go ahead. Merry Christmas. Merry Thank Christmas you. to you. I even want red for you guys. Yeah, yes. all right. That, that, Light that it extends up. to the board, to you, Sam, Sam. the audience, Sam. Jen, the whole Thank you. The TV Do you think board. we're done? Doing this? <laughs> Happy season. Continue. We need no. a continuance, Jen. Can, can she do this administratively? No, she can do this administratively. Yeah. Just sketch the walk on yeah. the thing I and get Barbara to take it under advisement. On. Second. And the oak. And they out, yeah. It, 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 too many people again speaking at once. Who, 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 who. Betsy and Mary. With the revised plan. Yep. And which will be done administratively. Okay. Yes, Mike. There were no signatures on the copy I got. So I'll be sure we get signatures. Yeah. For those You're right. Mary, I need them to sign this. Okay. You're out Okay. I thought, wait a minute. I don't have to sign coffee. Mm. Actually, we might have the sign coffee. If you do, as long as somebody does. Yeah. I, mean, just just, yeah, I, like I know I gave you the sign coffee. Yeah, you probably. Uh, there's something here. We'll see. Drum roll. It was kind of a hostile situation, mm -hmm. to be honest. It sounds that way. <laughs> we've, had, we've had a rough week. <laughs> you know what the line I just went through? We had a meeting last night. Really. Like you I were, know. No. I was on. I was Somebody on vacation. I came back early no, it's to come that. tonight. Oh, lucky. Oh. She yeah. asked me to come Everybody, last night. I was like, no. I, I, I need more than one day away. Gosh, yeah. I just I checked mine. Mine doesn't have a sign. So you've but been I'll, sort of like I'll the warden on this project. <laughs> Yeah. See if you have the signature. And I got everything done, and I was excited for the hearing last week. And I booked my vacation because I'm like, I need to just like. Is this where it's needed, then? Yeah. I don't see any signatures online. No, nope, Marion, you don't have it either. Done? I no, um, it's with my know, last night. We're gonna vote on this. All right, no, I'm just not check. Five, I know, I know that they, that she signed, and so I'm just well, checking. I don't have one. I know, check? and Hang I could have sworn I gave it to Jen. Sam, can you wait one second? Barbara said to me, make sure you give Jen the signed copy. All right, so we'll make so sure. So we'll put it on you. You know what? We'll make sure that Jen gets it. No, I have it. It has a little sticky with Jen and a heart on it, yep. and it's down in my office. That's right, baby. Okay. All right, so we got a motion and a second on the table. Um, any other comments from the commission? Comments from the public? Hearing none, I'm going to call for the vote. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed, no. Motion to adjourn. Second. No. Um, unanimous, so moved. And we have, a, we have a motion by Mike Powers to adjourn. Stop. One second. second. If there's a need to. We're putting these closed hearings on Monday morning's hearing at 7 o'clock. We can't wait to come we in. We can't wait. We can't oh, wait. So much fun. <laughs> Eggnog. Eggnog. <laughs> okay, so we have a motion in the second on the floor to adjourn. Um, Jetsy did. Anything at second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed, no. Extensions, you need to I don't care.